The title as supervillain is, unsurprisingly, one few aspire to, and yet can be an extremely rewarding and, however arduous, career path. Bear in mind that this career will not appeal to everyone. It takes a special person to hold human life in utter disregard, to actively pursue the terrorization of an entire population, and to command respect from his minions while donning a green cloak or a white jumpsuit. The hours are unpredictable, the opposition fierce, and there exists the remote possibility of perishing in an extremely swift and well-coordinated airstrike against your base of operations. But with this five-step program, you can optimize your chances of becoming an effective, heartless, terror-inducing supervillain. With a little work, you can be standing atop a moonlit spire of your own 17th century castle, laughing maniacally <laughs> while moving your pawns on the chessboard of life. It cannot be emphasized enough. You are, after all, trying to be a super villain. It's important that you are able to outsmart your opponents and manipulate your allies. So get in that library and hit those books. I strongly suggest subject matter directly related to your specific goals, i.e. world domination, global devastation, household domination, etc. Try to focus on those topics that will improve your ability to manipulate others, enhance your business management skills, and help define what makes you special. Does playing Toccata in Fugue in D minor on a huge pipe organ appeal to you? How about taking an opera or symphony every Saturday night? Or pursuing falconry? Whatever quirky trait you adopt, remember, make it your own. No one will remember you if you don't possess at least one interest or hobby that sets you apart from the crowd. Put a large emphasis on math and science, particularly those subjects that will help assist you in viewing the planet less like a thriving, beautiful web of life and more like a host of organically sustained numbers that could use a good thinning. Statistics should help, as well as any subject that can aid you in making every decision based not on emotion, but on cold, hard numbers. If you plan on attending a university in hopes of pursuing supervillainhood, try to avoid those courses which may unwittingly impress a sense of ethics or morality upon you. General philosophy courses may be playing with fire, and definitely avoid those courses dealing with the philosophy of ethics. Sure, your professor may be a postmodern relativist unwilling to take a hard-line stance on many issues of morality, but the odds are fairly strong that he or she will strongly oppose the subjugation extermination of those humans who oppose you. If you absolutely have to take classes of this nature, it would probably be best to avoid mentioning your plans to your professor and everyone in your entire class. Probably the entire college body too. Better yet, just don't tell anyone anything at this stage. Without money, you're not only largely ineffective, you're kind of creepy. No one is going to take a guy wearing a cape seriously unless that guy is seen getting picked up or dropped off by a limo, a chopper, or a private jet. More importantly, you can pretty much disregard this entire list without an obscene amount of money. How are you going to get a respectable education, a Bavarian castle, minions? In pursuit of the coveted label supervillain, this must be your first aspiration. Thankfully, with little to no moral consideration blocking your way, any financial endeavor that crosses your mind, however base, may be pursued. The porn industry, drug trafficking, child labor, politics, nothing is off limits. Just generate some serious income. Of course, such unscrupulous activities may catch the attention of various law enforcement agencies, and while I advise you to avoid incarceration, most supervillains have had to put in some time in this regard. View your time in prison as an opportunity to hone your skills, connect with potential minions, and brush up on your Machiavelli. Whether atop the loftiest mountain peak or within the deepest recesses of the earth, your base of operations or place of residence must invoke a sense of unmitigated power, spark architectural interest, and display a keen grasp of organization. Whether it be a castle deep within the dark forests of Latvia or a neoclassically inspired mansion on a remote tropical island, your lair must be big, bad, and hidden. It should reflect your personal megalomania, temporary delusions of grandeur, and a sense of pompous entitlement. Keep it well stocked in case of emergency, which will inevitably come. Outfit it with a secret escape tunnel and install a self-destruct system. Whether or not you opt for the big red lights and sirens to warn your minions of the imminent destruction of your compound, you must implement a countdown. With a preliminary escape plan in mind, five minutes should be more than ample time to escape the devastation. 
Flair is optional, but it can do wonders in the realm of psychological impact. Often, the implementation of flair is directly related to a physical defect, such as a limp, poor eyesight, missing limb, or horrible and irreversible facial disfigurement. If you suffer from a visibly obvious physical defect, consider yourself lucky. You're halfway there. If not, don't worry in the slightest. Dr. Doom, in the infant stage of supervillainhood, suffered a small facial injury, but Doom, in his infinite wisdom, knew that his negligible scar didn't exactly warrant covering up his face with an iron mask for the rest of his life. So how did he overcome this obstacle? He had the mask put on his face immediately after its forging. Believe me, red-hot metal when applied to flesh and allowed to cool will do some fairly extensive epidermal damage. Consider yourself inspired. And last, and most important benefit of flair, is the component of fear it can induce. It can almost guarantee that if you walk into a busy Starbucks with an obsidian skull mask and a prosthetic arm ending in a rusty meat hook, you can probably butt into the line anywhere you please. I'll take a venti half soy latte and your soul.